okay so let's continue the um, definition of the ambient intelligence systems so that we can uh, understand better which are the characteristics of the projects uh, that you are starting to discuss and to propose uh, among you and in your groups and uh, I, rem I remind you that uh, last time we uh, analyzed this uh, diagram that uh, reminds us uh, of what are the four main steps uh, that must be present in, every, in any and every MI project, uh, in every MI system. Uh, so to, to give the, the proactiveness uh, in, the, in the environment behavior, we need all four of these characteristics. Hmm? So one of the questions that you have to, to uh, answer when you are uploading your, pro your project proposal is uh, which are the four uh, main steps that, uh, that your project will implement. Uh, uh, so just as a checklist for yourself, uh, uh, just be sure not we are not forgetting something, okay? Because otherwise what we are doing would be a sensing project or would be uh, um, an automatic algorithm in there or maybe we may would be a mobile application, but would not but it would not be would not have all the characteristics of a real smart environment. Mm -hmm. So these uh, these four steps are mandatory. Okay, we will not pass any project proposal that doesn't have some of these uh, or some action, or some feature, some behavior in all of these uh, four steps. Additionally, uh, in the literature, there are, there are different, and also in the reading that, uh, that we had uh, about the Intelligent Environment Manifesto, there are different, uh, many other features that characterize more or less uh, the specific uh, uh, behavior, specific structure of an MEI system. And uh, I try to synthesize all of this uh, literature in this diagram uh, with a list of six main features, okay? These are uh, not as mandatory are, are the four, as the four steps are. So uh, these are just uh, suggestions in a way of what uh, qualities we would like to insert uh, into our project. Some projects will have some of these uh, uh, features more developed uh, and maybe other, other features totally neglected or very, very little developed. Or other projects would be more uh, so developed in another area or vice versa so these are just the uh, dimensions in which the project depending on the kind of the project uh, may uh, be more or less uh, uh, say important or more or less uh, um, uh, developed uh, in this sense okay so what are these uh, uh, six features so uh, uh, um, currently we are not asking you to identify these features in the, net, the, the deadline for next uh, week uh, not yet it will be uh, for later okay but let's just uh, use them for helping us to understand uh, about these projects. So the first two feature, the first two features are sensitive and responsive. In a way, we already have a, a sensing step and an acting step um, that already guarantee us that this project is able to sense. Huh? Sensitive means that every MEA system should have a part of, of its system that is able to sense something. Sense means measuring, means uh, knowing information about the environment, means getting information about the user. This information can be only uh, you know, gathered once at the beginning or most likely will be gathered continuously with some sensor that in, with a given periodicity uh, will uh, acquire some data and uh, about the environment or about the occupants. Hmm? Uh, data about the occupants uh, may come from uh, sensors that go with the user. They may be wearable sensors like bracelet or something like that, or maybe sensors that are already on board of something that is already with the user. Hmm? So, but in, in a way we are continuously getting this information and information in some way we will process them and uh, use it for some purpose in the project and at the same time being able to act uh, to respond mm, in some way so a project that doesn't do any response that doesn't change the environment in any way that the user has no way uh, to see or to perceive that the project did something is not an intelligent environment the intelligent 
you know the the intelligence in the environment cannot just stay in the brain of the environment it should go out uh, and should have visible or tangible results and I'm not saying only visible because it's visible uh, relates to the eye maybe something that we hear something that we feel something that mm, moves or so on or so on so it's not just let's use visible in a, in a generic sense uh, some output from the system that the user is able to perceive hmm? to receive in a way so these two features are the basics huh, for for all kind of uh, smart environments adaptive <coughs> systems are adapt uh, systems that uh, can adapt can change huh? can customize their behavior depending on depending on the context in general depending on the user depending on the time of the day depending on the weather depending on the temperature depending on the number of people that we have depending on the action that the user is doing depending on the mood of the user depending on you know there are a lot of variables that from the user point of view could change the way that the system should respond so when I'm relaxed, the system could give me a response and I would be happy. When I'm hungry or when I'm in a hurry in the morning, when I'm rushing out to come to work or to get to catch a train, well, maybe I don't want the same response of the, of the system that I would have during the evening when I'm more relaxed and I want to watch TV. So the same um, sensing data so the system senses that I am in this place, I'm opening the door, for example, uh, may be interpreted in different way due to context information. Other information that doesn't rela re uh, relate exactly to that sensor, but uh, is information that we have and can change the interpretation that we give uh, of the user. So this can be very complex. In general, you need really a lot of intelligence, let's, let's call it like that, to really understand the context in which the user is doing something but in our project it can also be something very simple uh, but uh, something that we show that our um, system will decide compute decide what to do on the moment we are not building a system that has only a set of predefined responses predefined actions hmm? that would be not no, an, an, an ambient intelligence system it would be an ambient automatic system something that will automate some tasks uh, always in the same way uh, we should be able to uh, take into account you know something from the environment or from the users so maybe, may, maybe there are more users in the house or in the place uh, and each of them may have different preferences you know in the transportation board we may you may have the casual rider or may you may, may you might have the um, the commuter that goes the same train every day so it's a different information that may be useful to change or to customize uh, the output the behavior of the system or the output of the system um, so in general I use this word the context to signify all the information side information that may ha we may have from the profiles from other sensors they may that may change the interpretation of the user actions or better of the actions that the system will do hmm? of the response of the system um, it would be very difficult uh, in our in our course here to do any inference based on statistics so when the user always does this, does this action or when many users agree on this or have the same behavior which is a very strong way uh, uh, it's also a good way of customizing a system observe the statistics of the actions of the user and then apply them in order to predict uh, the problem is that in our course we will not, not have the, the possibility of observing many users for a long time so any adaptation based on uh, statistics uh, uh, will be difficult to, or impossible to implement because we are not implementing a system really uh, only on on the in the lab so uh, we will not we will not have the data to for training this model so we must rely on simpler ways of adaptation hmm? but keeping keep in mind uh, uh, the question 
when you are thinking about your system uh, how can the response change according to which variables hmm? or the system in that in this condition will always say uh, will always act in the same way another attribute another feature is the transparency of the system so people don't like computers i mean real people okay um, and don't see a value of, of having or seeing a computer in every corner of the house or in every corner of the place computers are something stupid difficult to use uh, uh, forces you a given interface and so on so the idea is to try to hide the computers and make uh, the environment itself intelligent the objects themselves intelligent hmm? so the there is this, this movement of uh, disappearing computer this uh, is a keyword that has been proposed in 1991 so it's a very long way uh, where the idea is to the make the technology disappear so that people just feel that that something is more clever more efficient mm, faster or more adaptive but it does they don't see actually a computer doing the computation okay the computer with all the blinking lights are only good for b series science fi movies but in the reality you know uh, people just want to get there and i don't know um, when you go into a bus and you have to beep your uh, your ticket this is a very visible and ugly computer requiring you a very uncomfortable action for going and beeping the, your your ticket it's, it's not intelligent you don't say it's smart it would be smart if, if it would recognize you as you climb on the on the on the bus for example the computer would be there the sensor would be there in a way but you, you don't see them so the bus is smart because it's able to read without you reaching out for a computer hmm? and um, so the idea is uh, not to add visible technology to the user but to but to make technology hidden and make objects uh, or environment or spaces uh, turn them into interfaces for these computers using the objects letting the user interact with the objects and not with the technology uh, you know a good example of these uh, are uh, cars automobiles when we drive them uh, we the car the normal cars have the same have, have had the same interface the same user interface since uh, i don't know probably 50 years or more uh, you have uh, a steering wheel you have three pedals you have a clutch a gear and that's it the, in these 50 years the, the cars have transformed totally under the hood so right now when you are pushing the brake pedal or you are pushing the, uh, the, um, the gas pedal what you are doing is not really uh, applying a force to the brake or opening a valve into your uh, engine you are giving a signal to a computer that will compute the best thing to do so you will have anti-brake system that will not apply the force that you want because uh, you don't want to block the wheels you have uh, uh, the the injection control computer that will not apply all the gas that you are asking for but only the right amount that will be combusted totally so actually we have a lot of intelligence in the cars uh, and that people don't feel don't see don't need to be aware of that Okay, there, will, there are people uh, like myself who, do, who got their driving license uh, before any electronics got into the car. But I'm still able to drive today, hopefully. Uh, because the behavior of the system is the same, just better. We didn't put any new gears or buttons or levers uh, in the dashboard uh, to show the anti-braking system or to show the injection control system. No so all the intelligence has been hidden in a way from the user the user will only feel that the car is smarter oh look i broke uh, i hit the i hit the brake 
in the, on, the, on the ice uh, and the car didn't, uh, didn't slid around. Uh, was able to, uh, with, with some strange noise probably from the brakes, then I realized the, the car is doing something for me. But I don't need to be aware of that uh, explicitly. Mm? So we lower the requirement, uh, the interaction requirement for the user. The user doesn't need to be aware of the system, just interact with an environment that just behaves better. Mm? This is not easy. But the idea is, whenever you can hide some technology instead of showing it to the user, hide behind some objects and let the user use an object, use a space, use a location, and that location, that space, that object will behave better intelligently, then you did a, uh, a good step toward the disappearing computer, towards the, um, the, the acceptance also of technology. Ubiquitous is another term, it's a strange word. Me, ubiquitous means uh, everywhere, actually. Uh, some other people call them pervasive. Uh, it refers to the fact that, uh, well, computers are everywhere. A ubiquitous system is a system that can be deployed across uh, thousands of different computers. Well, they're not, they, they may not be a desktop computer. They may be probably a, a very small, uh, CPU powered sensor uh, but there will be computations in, a, in many places and uh, um, so the idea is uh, instead of having a big centralized server with everything on it uh, we have a, a network of small computers that exchange data or gather data or do some computation or do some action some feedback uh, on their own and they can uh, to talk to each other in a way so the idea is, uh, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, different users and each user has a smartphone or has a different kind of sensor. So actually we may have hundreds of users or thousands of users. Each of them is a computer or actually is a device that can act as a computer. Hmm? And so the computation is distributed in a way across many nodes that may, be, may have uh, low computational power probably may have uh, low requirements uh, and should not consume too much energy but there are many of them mm -hmm. uh, so in this case the, um, the general vision about ubiquitous computing is just being able to throw away you know, the computers in the spaces and they will they will self-configure self-discover and interoperate according to the applications this is not possible today it's not possible in this course of course because it will require highly parallel computing and distributed programming but uh, this is just you know the vision of uh, somebody called them uh, intelligent dust uh, uh, because th that we, we will have uh, so many and so uh, miniaturized uh, computers that they look like dust in the environment uh, it's not we are not there yet of course this is just a vision and uh, but the idea is uh, uh, let's try to think about uh, many different points where the computation may happen and these points could uh, uh, migrate uh, or could, uh, can change and can also move. Maybe they are not fixed because they are, yeah, we are talking about transportation, so they may move with the transportation medium, they may move with the user, and depending on whether they are close together or not, they may communicate or not, mm -hmm. and they could create friendships uh, on the moment uh, when they are close to each other. Uh, okay, we are talking about intelligent systems. So intelligence is another nice to have feature. Um, my, uh, an intelligent system is a system that in some way will incorporate uh, some programming techniques uh, uh, that are more or less uh, uh, under the umbrella of the name artificial intelligence. Could be machine learning, could be vision, could be reasoning and so on. Hmm? Uh, many other features to be implemented correctly, for example, the context uh, sensitivity, requires some form of intelligence. Okay, so understand whether a person is working or relaxing uh, really would require having a, lo a long list of uh, uh, data and be able to analyze this data and to infer from behavior some, uh, um, some more general attribute of the user starting from raw data hmm? and this is a very hard thing to do 
actually um, this the, is the most difficult part to implement uh, of the of the whole uh, set of features to implement in our projects because it would require at least being able to master these technologies in some way being able to use them and to incorporate them in a meaningful way into the system so uh, traditionally the projects that we had uh, have a very little or I say a very very basic intelligence okay we don't need uh, uh, we would require at least two courses of, of artificial intelligence before doing something meaningful in a distributed environment okay so we are not really requiring that it's just something that we need to keep in mind uh, uh, in some cases that would uh, some intelligence would be useful but we already have uh, the opportunity of exploiting cloud services that have some intelligence for example if you want to do voice recognition so understanding the, sp the spoken text of a person there are several uh, online services where you can just send the audio, audio file and they, do, they will give you back the transcribed text so all the toolkits for creating conversational assistance work like that there are cloud services where the intelligence so understanding a language is a very complex problem but all of that is inside the server you just use them as a service the same for image recognition now, there are servers that are using the famous tensorflow uh, algorithm from from google so you can send them the image and have a, a list of uh, likely candidates for the contents of the image so we don't need to implement those things ourselves maybe some of these can be just used uh, as external services so our system architecture of course will need to include calls uh, to these external services but this is how today's architectures are done some components are inside the home some components are outside and our uh, services that we can exploit okay so these are the, um, the main features that we you know we they will help us in thinking about how to shape the project no? if we can do something that can improve some of these qualities it's better than trying to work on other types of qualities that may not be so relevant uh, for the intelligence uh, of the of the environment so these are just general um, thoughts but we need to where's that okay here We need to translate that into the actual activities that we are going to do into this semester. Okay, so we more or less understood the, the final goal. We want an MEI system, and an MEI system should have such and such characteristics: the four main steps uh, and the features that we saw around uh, those six uh, uh, six uh, uh, circles. Uh, the next step, uh, okay, to, to reach the goal, we must first uh, define what the goal is. So decide the project and then decide the roadmap for reaching that. So this set a series of steps uh, that will make the design process in our course. So design process is, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can check this uh, in your own time. Um, it's a, a formalized method for um, being able to reach a result uh, with a given number or uh, of known number of steps uh, the definition for wikipedia of a design process is uh, the formulation of a plan to help an engineer build a product with a specified performance goal okay i try to adapt this definition to our case so the engineering design process is the formulation of a plan so actually we are today we are sharing a plan how to get to the goal okay to help a team not just an engineer but a team we are, we are working in teams in groups uh, to build uh, a product not a product a system in our case in M it's an mei system with specified performance and functionality goals we'll be more interested in functionality than in performance if the system is not very, very well performant it's a bit slow well we don't care okay it's just a prototype but we are more interested in the functionality of the system so this is what we are trying to do find a plan share a plan construct a plan that we can all uh, use to move forward toward the goal and uh, um, 
we'll try to define describe one one possible plan because there are many development processes one possible plan that will apply to the type of projects that we are de developing here i'll destroy i'll describe the pros the process the plan in seven different steps uh, but then we will simplify them and skip some of the steps uh, due to the timing constraints of the course hmm? some some steps uh, will say okay we are not really doing that here because we don't have the time for okay and so it will be the simplified process at the end so uh, the first step uh, is actually before starting the plan is to define the goal okay uh, so the first uh, deadline and we will have this deadline I had a uh, signal uh, every now and then in, the, in this presentation because it will uh, you know uh, mark the, the different uh, milestones in the in the work uh, the first one is always the, the group composition and description of a summary of the project you know the Google document with this format just a clarification if you have uh, if you are if you are a very good group with a lot of ideas you can propose more than one project okay we will check all of them and we'll say you will tell you which is the, the best or the most interesting one uh, but the other ones so you, have, you have more chances in a way and the other ones maybe could, you could you could uh, sell to the others if you want uh, if they don't have good ideas the ones that are not chosen so this is something we will, uh, we will discuss uh, on uh, uh, next monday so you have time all this week until Sunday to upload your uh, group uh, and your project description here. And uh, um, on next Monday, we'll spend some time to give you feedback about which proposals are accepted, which are rejected, and which can be improved. Hmm? We see that uh, in next Monday. And then you will have another week uh, to finalize uh, the, the proposal according to the suggestion that we may give uh, in next Monday hmm? so that uh, at the end of March uh, hopefully all of you have a, have a good project defined and accepted to work on hmm? um, the most important part of course is this the five to ten line describing the project from the user point of view is the goal that we want to reach so what's actually the ambient intelligence system that we want to build how does it solve the MEI in transportation, in mobility, for mobility topic, uh, in, a, in which specific way? Which are the four steps? We will ask them, we will ask you to write the four steps, sensing, acting, uh, reasoning, and interacting here. Not yet. They will be in the next deadline. Uh, so we want to go stepwise. First, validate the idea and then try to structure it in a, in a, in a good way. But of course, in your mind, uh, you should already think about that. Hmm? So this is the first step and then this is the final goal how to reach it so uh, maybe you have already seen this picture hmm? uh, no uh, it's uh, no, not all of you but it's very common that this picture that has some variations some different but the the idea of this picture is to show the different ways uh, a project can be understood no? so actually really the project is wing swing for a baby and uh, the swing is uh, how the customer explained it and how the project leader understood it how the analyst designed it how the programmer wrote it how the business consultant uh, described it uh, very shiny and very comfortable and this is very sad uh, but it's very real how the project was documented uh, what is being installed by the operations team how the customers would build hmm? how it was supported and that's another and what the customer really needed and we can go on there are many variants of this picture around what's the message here there are two messages everyone in a project team understands differently the same object so if you think you agree on what you are going to build then realize that you are not agreeing each of you has a different idea has a different point of view until or unless you write it down and you try to explain it to another person you will not discover that you are 
that you have different ideas probably and some of you consider something more important than somebody else and so on so i see i see that too many times huh? people that we are, we are asking we will be asking you to write deliverables to write some content to explain something on the website and people told just what just very very short and very synthetic description say but we understand we know what uh, what we want to build huh? i see that fa to failing very very often because actually when asked uh, there was probably one person that uh, imagined they had the project in mind but you know what is in, in my mind is not shared with the group and so when it goes to implementing stuff it would be a critical point because n n the other one didn't i'm not sure of what num person number one uh, has, has understood from the project so try always to spend it's it's important we we have to spend time in discussing and documenting what we want to do otherwise we end up with something that is really different uh, from what uh, we want it and the second message here is that the customer what the customer really needed is different from what the customer explained in the first frame so these are all different people but the first and the last one are always the customer so how what i need and what i will be able to explain you about what i need are different the customer doesn't have the technical knowledge doesn't have the terminology doesn't have the uh, understanding of the, of the capability of the technology to be able to express what they want they will try to approximate what they want in their own language in their own understanding but it will be a very uh, imprecise description you cannot rely on that you can't rely on that you must make an, an extra effort to understand what they really need not what they are telling you to they need hmm? i make you a, a very short uh, a very simple example uh, once i i was th um, discussing with some energy manager for a building okay the energy manager is the person that is responsible for uh, controlling the energy consumption uh, dispersions and so on and costs uh, for running a building and we were discussing about it, these technologies uh, iot or whatever is able uh, is appearing today and i asked them well what would you need from an intelligent system for managing your energy and the answer was uh, oh i would like to have the data in excel format which is not a requirement it doesn't mean anything which data for what purpose but do you really want uh, an excel file with 10,000 rows and then how do you analyze these numbers but that person you know the know that the knowledge of computer science of the person was excel so he described what he wanted in a terms that he understood he wasn't able to say oh i would like to have a dashboard that tell me some key features about the building consumption he was already planning uh, a, a wrong and too detailed uh, implementation say okay if i had this in excel i could write uh, i could create a chart by hand by clicking every time every day with a new excel a new chart and so on so we people the users cannot explain to us what is the technology that we should build for them we should not listen to users when they talk about technology that's why it's also important we we also don't speak about the technology at the beginning we should understand the needs not the system not the devices not the interface not the action what needs do you have i need to see this and that information okay i'll take care of it you don't need to think about the tools or the format or the files i understood what you really want so this is the most important step understanding what the users want and then being sure that all the developers understand the same things hmm? and this requires time requires discussions requires writing down documents and so on and it requires a process a process may help us uh, in governing uh, all this mess that is hinted by this picture 
um, there is not one single process today a lot of uh, development uh, uh, teams uh, are more suitable for uh, an agile process where you do a lot of uh, iteration of a project but uh, uh, agile development would require that you already have the skills for the first prototype at the beginning and in this case we are building the skills uh, as we are going while well, we are progressing with the with the project so yeah, it's not really applicable here we we will use a more traditional approach uh, well, in the first, uh, while we are building the basic skills in some Python and web and database and so on technologies, in parallel we are thinking about or designing the, mm, the features of the system. And later on we'll start implementing. Mm -hmm. So it's a process that should be uh, suitable for this course from the initial idea that we will decide on Monday. Okay, so that will be a reality in, a, in eight days from now, just to scare you. Uh, to a final working system hmm? uh, any process of course has some assumptions and the assumption that we, we make here is uh, the the approach we try to follow is technology neutral what does it mean that it doesn't use technology no we will use some technology but the choice of the technology will not be the first one will be the last one first what we want to do then later after we already decided and fixed and reasoned about what we want to do then we'll choose the technologies which is much different uh, like uh, you know, you're, we're working at the system level like uh, system integrators we see what's there and we have put it together to build our system it's different from what uh, many companies are doing because many companies tend to specialize on a technology brand so maybe I have this company very good that is uh, Microsoft certified. So for them, all the solutions will be Microsoft solution. Some uh, uh, company that maybe uh, is very uh, has invested a lot on the LoRa. Hmm? LoRa is a wireless um, communication protocol. Don't ask me anything more about that because they won't be able to answer. I don't know anything. But there are companies that are specializing on that protocol. And so for them, any project will necessarily have that protocol, whether it's useful or not. There's, there are, in many companies, the focus is we are good on a specific part. A protocol, a device, a language, a, a structure, a library, uh, I don't know, whatever. And so we try to build and sell product based on our core knowledge, which is perfectly fine, okay? That would be a technology-driven process. How can I exploit my technology knowledge into some project? Perfectly fine. This is what we want, okay? It's not a course on databases where everything should be focused on the database. It's not a course on object-oriented programming when everything should be uh, on the uh, classes and objects and uh, we will use what's there the technology that, that, that we find to, but the goal is not the technology itself okay so we are learning python good because we need it because it's easy it's, but if in your project you decide not to use python and do everything i don't know in in kotlin it's another language it's up to you What's important for us is the features of the system, the architecture of the system, the four steps of the IBM, of the IBM intelligence. We are only trying to give you suggestions about which technologies may, we feel are more, are more useful for, for, to you for building a project. But it's not about technology here. Hmm? So the sooner you choose a technology, the more you're limiting your design choices. So first try to understand uh, the general behavior of the system. Then we try to find the sensor, then we try to find the computer, then we try to select the database, then we try to find a, a, a cloud computing uh, service that fixed our need. Okay? So don't try to uh, don't try to ask for Excel because it's something that you already need no today and so you imagine today that you need it maybe not maybe it's not the best choice hmm? and to understand whether it's the best choice or not we must first describe very well what we want hmm? 
Okay. Uh, the process that uh, we are following is uh, summarized in this picture here. We won't describe all of it today, only the first steps, because it's the ones uh, that we need uh, to, to work on immediately, and then we'll continue it. Uh, I will split th this discussion in two or three different uh, uh, dates, no? just to... Uh, it's, it's not useful if I'm telling you something about the final phase today, because we will forget it anyway. So this is the, the, the process, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. And uh, you see that from one step to the next one, you always have on the side some documents. So a step will produce something for the next step. And this product of the first step will be the input on which the second step will work. That will produce something else, that will be the input for the next step and so on. This is a very classical uh, process, a waterfall process. Okay, we'll simplify it a lot, of course, uh, um, but we have many different steps uh, in the same way. Something, some activity, the next activity, and something that uh, marks the end of the previous activity by describing the results. Hmm? Or results can be documents, can be the website, can be some code, can be some, some device, something real. Okay. We cannot move uh, until we know what's the result of the previous phase. And uh, most importantly, I, I, I draw them here, but really they should be uh, everywhere, these lines, these iteration lines. It will happen, it will happen, that we decide something today that looks like a very good idea, and next month we understand that it was not so good after all. It was too difficult, it was too stupid, it was not the best choice to do. We should, we should change our mind. We should be able to change our mind, go back and change something that we already decided. So you are writing something about your project, uh, you are writing some deliverables, and then if, if you go and you find that actually the choices you made are not so good, uh, then you, can, you are free to go back and change them, as long as, of course, the characteristics of the project don't change. They are still MEI systems. But especially in the details, uh, we are never, never able to do the right choice first. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the process is split into, well, there are seven, seven steps, but we split them into three big boxes. Uh, the first box uh, is the idea, is the phase we are now, from now until the 24th of March. Then the specification phase where we refine the idea and try to understand uh, how a system can be constructed to implement that idea. And finally, the development phase, where we actually are writing code, implementing stuff, connecting devices, and so on. Okay? The specification phase is important. You should not cut it out. I should not start, jump directly to development. Uh, because uh, it's not uh, a single program running on a single device that may be you have everything in your mind uh, and you can start writing it's a distributed system and it's important to understand the different pieces what they do what data they exchange how they synchronize mm -hmm. and so we really need some time specification time to understand that and at the end have a good this uh, good description of how the system look like and what are its components and if i if we are mapping that into um, some dates we have uh, the 17 or 3 for the title and goal of the project is the idea and then we have time until uh, the deadline for deliverable number one which is the first website uh, with a description with one page description so most setting out the website but fixing the idea of the vision of your project is not already a description uh, this detailed description is just a vision of what the system will do uh, by the end of march hmm? uh, these parts here will not really be done or at least we try to do them uh, uh, informally hmm? we don't have time to do every step uh, as it should be uh, but i'll try to describe you what i mean there and then in during so during march the goal is to define what the project will do 
during April is we are working on the architecture and on the list of features so the detailed list of what the system does you know when uh, you are buying some product on the on the box you have some list of uh, items this is doing this and that and that these are the features the reason why you buy this product is because it's able to clean your floor for example that's a feature uh, it's not the battery it's not the speed it's not it's the actual function that the system delivers to you mm? so from the idea of the project we should break it out into the individual features that are needed for implementing that idea for satisfying that vision and the architecture architecture of the system is how many pieces do we need how many computers how many sensors how many wearables how many cars how many and how do they interact with each other and where do i put the database and where do i put the sensor and uh, what uh, how what protocol do they use to communicate and so on so all the blueprint uh, the general picture of what i need on the table to start with and wh where is any function being implemented if i have two computers any given function should can be in the first or in the second or distributed be, be among the two i should decide the best choice hmm, in this case this part is quite challenging i would say for some kind of project so we'll have a class dedicated to the architecture and finally the implementation part uh, that doesn't have any specific deadlines so because the end of april and the end of march will require you to upload uh, this information on the website yeah we don't have any deadline unless uh, it should be ready for the exam hmm? so maybe you finish that in three days or you go along and uh, finish it by the end of july and that's the only time where it will be checked hmm? okay <coughs> so let's start uh, walking through this process problem statement define what problems need to be solved by the project problems to be solved uh, we are trying to solve a problem for some user not for ourselves not for the technology not for the sensors so uh, solving a problem means bringing some benefits to the user or to the environment in some way but ultimately it's the user who is going to pay or ask or buy for our system so there should be a benefit for them what the system does for the users this is the most difficult question the question that we are asking you uh, today in this week and uh, in the next step so not for this week but right after that for the first deliverable we'll ask you for describing the uh, this idea in uh, half a page uh, maximum one page of vision vision is something you would uh, tell to another person in two minutes and there you will describe the advantages of your system what what good does it bring to them okay the other people are not interested at all in what technology you are using most likely they won't understand it uh, and so try to describe the results the benefits of the system and not the technology it's, it's hard huh? it's uh, I already said this, sen this sentence probably 74 times but because uh, wh when you try to do that you will find it's very hard not to talk about technology issues but mm, I will encourage you to speak with people from outside the Polytechnical and to see the kind of faces they are doing when you describe your new project if they understand then you are speaking the, the right language hmm? and uh, being uh, very focused what is the environment in which we are working no MEA ambient intelligent first of all we must define the ambient where where is the project done uh, you, the wrong answer is everywhere no we should define we should choose one specific context in which to deploy the, the project not maybe it's not a specific location maybe the context is i don't know the um, the, the bike lane huh? 
uh, bike lanes there are many bike lanes there's not a single place but it's a context in which some things happen some users have some kind of behaviors and so we must define very carefully what is the environment in which the system is uh, assumed to operate and uh, equally important uh, the users who are the users that are the target of our system don't be afraid of uh, narrowing too much your project mm, it's not a real product uh, that we want to sell to 10 million people in order to be profitable we don't care it's something that we want to be technically sound so we find a niche we find a, a very small set of uh, of conditions of locations and of users and try to find good solutions for them the stricter the narrower the project the easier is will be to define which features are useful for those users in that environment and at, at that point the next step is how the environment we know which is the environment support the users and we know who they are again from the user point of view okay it's not the system do, does this and that but the user receives this and that try always to use the user as the subject of your sentences when you're describing the, things, the, the system hmm? and in this uh, vision uh, probably we, we should remind uh, these six features sensitive responsive adaptive transparent ubiquitous and intelligence and see whether our project uh, can exhibit these properties at this stage we don't know it's impossible in the next three weeks uh, to understand how much intelligence we can put into the system but it's only the potential that we know that, that's why we call it a vision something that we envision for the future then the next steps will be cutting down the big vision to something more feasible and something that can be done within the time constraints the idea is trying to selling your project what describing it to a non-engineer this is important so it's not something among engineers then we will have all the time to speak engineering language among us okay but the first step to understand whether the project is useful is try to talk the language of the user remember the swing we should be sure that what we are proposing is something that the user really needs not something that the user says tells, yes it's interesting because may maybe they're only say it's interesting it they will only tell us it's interesting to to make us go away uh, but to really understand uh, what what needs which needs the, uh, are solved uh, so okay we already say we don't want to talk about technology right now but in a way uh, we are we are aware of what technology is able to do today so we don't want to describe something that is really out of reach from today's technology okay i cannot imagine something that uh, makes people fly for example hmm? it would be in interesting but you know for with today's technologies uh, it's not feasible yet so of course we right now we don't enter into the details of the technology but we ensure that it would be later possible to do that okay we can of course we are still in a university so we can stretch the reality a bit uh, but not too much we can do something very simple that can imagine or we can imagine we can project it into something then that, that maybe in the future would be possible okay we are proposing something new we are not just replicating something that, that is already existing but not too much you know, the feasibility is something that should that should be in the back of our minds uh, since the beginning start simple one feature two three no two three too many too many already so a system should be strong in some points and should not be a long list and a long collection of many different features it would be dispersive it would be impossible to implement you cannot implement 100 different features in three months and then of this long list of features there will be three or four that are the real selling ones the real important ones for the users okay so the other ones could be dropped out otherwise the risk uh, will be to 
implement only the ones that are easier and forget about the, the ones that are important and at the end you run out of time and you have a system that doesn't do anything useful but you worked a lot you implemented a lot of useless stuff so few features full MEI features so find the few features that are really where you can really see the ambient intelligence where you can really have the four the four steps and the features of the system everything that is not uh, um, useful for showing the intelligence of the environment uh, you can drop it out if you have a system that doesn't have any i don't know user registration to say something stupid every system real system should have some form for user registration you should be able to register choose your password challenge your password change your profile pictures and so on well, you don't want to spend one month uh, to implement the registration process we don't care it doesn't add anything to the mei project we are fine with the okay if if it's only one day of work who cares but uh, try to be very focused what is needed for the project to succeed you will leave out a lot of stuff of course a lot of useful stuff i'm not saying it's useless it's useful but it's not in the line of uh, giving the mei features to the project and so you will leave it out for the next for a possible future iteration for a future version of the project we don't care we care that the main features are implemented correctly not that you have 27 different features but then at the end uh, the real interaction with the user is missing hmm? um, so if you it's better to have a, a small and strong idea than a, than a long list of uh, weak ideas trivial but uh, true uh, try to tell a story describe why users should be happy to use your system hmm? not describing it feature by feature but describing by telling what the user does the user goes into that environment enters this does this action and then feels uh, sees something hmm? always talk about the user in this case and uh, the second column is even more important in this room we are the 70 most intelligent people in the planet no probably not so uh, it's likely that the, our idea is not the first time it came up onto planet earth okay some other people might have had uh, a similar idea a better idea okay let's not ignore them if you have a good idea try to search for it now we are using google for everything except for school i don't know why uh, try to say okay this is something i would love to i would love to have let's try to buy it for example huh? in simulation and let's look whether somebody is selling or, or building a system like that and have a look at what they've done what features they have do you like them are yours better can you improve yours by copying what the others did uh, this is important we don't care if you replicate something that is already existing okay it's not a problem it's not a requirement for the course but it's better if you implement something and you don't know what other similar stuff exists because uh, copying or seeing what the others did uh, is a way to shorten your development cycle you don't have to spend the time to do all the mistakes or all the reasonings that the other did uh, and all the mistakes and all the reasons are in embedded into other people's product and when you see somebody else's product and you see this sucks i don't like it then it's a lesson for yours you don't want yours to make the same impression and why did it, did it make that wrong impression hmm? and that's a question that we ask ourselves so it's very important to compare our idea that which is the best of the world with other ideas that they are convinced they are the best of the world hmm? 
and the same goes for involving users no i already told you once you have an idea try to speak with somebody from outside this room from outside the university but it's not enough to describe your idea it's more important to listen to their answer uh, i see a lot of people describing the project in a, they were so convinced about their project that they were trying to to impose it to force it to say okay but this is really good and if the other person says but i, do, I wouldn't care no i should you should care because okay uh, because this and that and that because you know if you get too much in love with your idea it's very difficult to understand the criticisms and it therefore will be very difficult to implement something that is useful for the others not for you hmm? so it's very important to listen to others maybe also to us when we give you feedback hmm? but we are minor more more important the potential users hmm? and this these are strong centers i will maybe try to explain it better next time but uh, usually users know better about what they want okay what they need who am i to tell you what you need you know what you need M i should be able to understand what you need to dig into your mind and say okay this person really in this context needs this this and so i, I need to extract from the users what are some needs for which we can work we can propose a system to solve those needs so maybe we ask them so they know better about, about themselves except when they don't what does it mean if i'm asking a user about something he doesn't have any experience with they cannot give us uh, any meaningful answer or do you think that in a flying system uh, it's better to have uh, um, you know altitude control or uh, uh, rotational control nobody will be able to answer because they never experienced a flying system so we but maybe in this case we are the engineers we see something that they don't see we see some opportunities so what we can get from the users is understanding their needs uh, and these needs are grounded in their experience so we can start from the needs of the users from their experience and we can add something with new technical capabilities that our users are not aware of and so on that path of what you want new what's uh, new behavior you want they will not be able to answer because a user only has experience of what you already tried hmm? it, it doesn't have the capability of understanding how it could be you understand how, how it is how it feels today hmm? so i try to describe them a new scenario i try to check their reactions but not extracting uh, hard information will be impossible hmm? so it's a, it's a difficult job of course to get all this information so all of this should be done by uh, the end of march so we have these two steps the first step is next monday where we get a title and the first lines of description some projects will get a green light next monday and so they should proceed to creating this uh, website we have at last point two weeks uh, for creating this website uh, in which uh, you try to expand uh, these five lines that you wrote in the google document into one one page of description with the with the um, with the uh, characteristic that we described before okay um we will give you a checklist uh, which is a document that will list uh, all the information that should be in the website we are not giving you a template uh, for the website nor we are asking you for a document to upload on the website okay so what we are saying is uh, create a website how you like with the graphics layout that you like at the beginning can also be very 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 crude very ugly with a default template we don't care you have all the time to change it okay um, but the information 
should be in a way included in the website so we don't want to see a link uh, um, download deliverable one okay but the information in the checklist for deliverable one should be integrated in the website where well depends on the design that we have for the website hmm? so you depending on your project you will organize the information in a way that you like as long as the information that is in this checklist should be present somewhere probably somewhere logical eh, where people can expect it we want to avoid uh, writing i don't know deliverable one or deliverable two on the website uh, because the website is for everybody to be to be read to be seen so we don't want to have any jargon specific to the to the course organization in the project description we are trying to build a website that they will describe the project not the course not the work here describe the project and so in different steps we will enrich the website uh, so that the project is presented in more detail in the next steps so, so the philosophy here is that cre we, we create a website a website presenting the project in different steps the first step uh, is the vision step deliver we call it d1 deliverable one a website with this uh, information about this checklist so it will be published on a website uh, but actually it's very simple it's this this information here uh, this is the kind of information that will be asked that will be required so for those uh, whose project uh, will be accepted on monday you have these two weeks uh, to create a website uh, uh, where on the github page that will be created uh, from the information that you give in the, the google document that's why we need to have in the google doc where was that the github username because when we approve a group uh, we will create a repository actually uh, really two one for the website and one for the project uh, code um, with uh, with access to these usernames that you list here so the day we accept your project you will have your projects uh, your uh, your repositories on github to work on and to start working for publishing these deliverables wait here for those people that on next monday will not have uh, a good project accepted we will work together and try to to improve it or try to think something else of course uh, the timing will be shorter because uh, you won't have two full weeks before this deadline um, we have we hope nobody will run out of this deadline so that by the end of march we really want to have uh, uh, everybody's uh, uh, project being published there and then and this is again a sunday and next and then next monday on the first of april is the first of april will uh, uh, give you some feedback from this point okay after we accept the project we will not stop you until the end okay so once the project is accepted uh, you go so the next uh, day the next feedbacks uh, that we have after the one and after the two are basically comments that we give on your deliverable you did some work we say how we will tell you where we feel it can be improved where we feel it's wrong where we feel it, it can be understood very well and so on but it's not accepted or rejected there is no score there is no grading it's just uh, we just, it's just us that we are spending some time in looking after you, your work and giving uh, you some suggestions you are free to listen or not uh, we hope you do we hope you, we hope you find value but uh, in, uh, in our feedback but it's not anything really formal okay and so the, how it happens uh, uh, we will uh, in the first of april we will be in the Ladispe doing the exercises in python and stuff like that uh, but in parallel so we, you have you have your, your work to do in the lab and in parallel we go group by group uh, by giving some uh, comments about uh, your your visual deliverable hmm? and we all the feedbacks uh, will be done like that while you're working in the lab uh, we go group by group and give some information we give you some some notes some uh, some points and so on okay in this uh, just to make some examples 
I try to imagine a very stupid uh, MEI system which has nothing to do with the mobility. And uh, this is the kind of uh, vision document I would have written. And uh, the project is called uh, Wake Kill. I, I don't remember why I called it in this way, but uh, each user, and this is the description, each user requires their own personalized wake up experience. Users will never miss a wake up call every morning, and um, it's hard to read, will be a pleasing experience hmm, waking up. And they will never be late. I can relate to this. Uh, your house, your devices, your calendars will team up to personalize the optimum wake up call, personalized to you and personalized to your day's schedule, location, and mood. It's a possible project. You see, I'm not using any technology word here. Always talking about the user. Hmm? Uh, the system will exploit different means to wake up users in the morning. Will you combine ringing, turning on the lights, the radio, and other methods? So we are acting on the environment that will help you in this wake up routine. Uh, according to uh, the available devices and the user preferences, adaptation. Depending on the devices that are available, they will be used or not, and depending on the user preferences. It will automatically adjust time according to, to the user agenda. Again, adaptation, user profiling. When the user is not at home, for example, in a hotel, it avoids activating at home devices. You know, when you are uh, in a hotel, then the uh, system will ring uh, in your house. No, it's not useful. Okay. Uh, so, so understand the content and normally user it avoids activating on devices and will only activate users devices other users devices okay there's a typo here it will detect when the user actually wakes up or is, or is already up maybe you're already up so it doesn't need to do all the noise so this are, could be one idea of the project i can tell it to a person and say okay there you have this problem it's hard to wake up in the morning i can help you with that i can help you with setting the right time i can help you with uh, uh, creating a, an environment that will help you get up and uh, and exploit the devices that you have and follow you even if you are you are as outside your home hmm? so uh that's the that's the the toy project no? that uh, we, we designed this is the first step. The, the first step uh, of your project, the vision, should be something like this. It doesn't tell us how it do, how it works. How can he switch the light on? How can he understand whether the user is at home? How can it read the user agenda? Okay, we, we as engineers have some idea that it can be done, right? Exactly how well, we need to study we need to check we need to read the documentation we need to maybe some write some tests and try something we know it can be done and so we write it here we don't describe it here we understand the system will be made of different parts the calendar is of, uh, will be probably stored somewhere in the cloud and there will there will be sensors in the house there will be ringers there will be uh, loudspeakers for the music there will be light control so we already understand that we need to be install something in the house and there will be many different devices it's something for later the user is not uh, when you say to the user that you are controlling the lights that's all they need to know they don't need to know that oh you need to change the light bulbs and then you need to put no I, at, that, at this stage it's not important what is the feature that they deliver what is the behavior that i'm helping you with so this uh, is the level of description that you we should get at the end of the month and writing it down will also help you the four of you in your group to understand each other every word here is important because after well after when you will have different ideas you will go back and read okay but is actually is this actually needed for this vision for this scenario or are, are we diverging uh, because we are all nerds we like to do strange stuff when we get uh, some passion about it mm -hmm. but then after we don't need, uh, we in this case we need to be focused what brings value to the project is whatever 
helps us to satisfy this vision or as we will see later a part of this vision not all of the initial vision will be realized that's for sure we will find uh, difficulties we will find uh, hard work to do and so we will have to drop something from this vision something will not be implemented we already know so in the next steps uh, we should have to prioritize what is more important and what is less important from this list not yet in the next steps okay for today it's enough uh, it's what uh, you need to know to work uh, if in this week and the next week uh, i remind you that uh, you have to walk to the ladispe lab so you can get some air during the break uh, and uh, to have some the first uh, lab in python <laughs>